What's going on YouTube? Not too long ago, in order to get good fuel economy, you had to make a lot of sacrifices. Vehicle design, power, and price. Toyota, however, has been working hard to remove those stigmas, and one of the most efficient vehicles they sell is the Corolla Hybrid. But for 2025, its big brother, the Camry, has gone hybrid exclusive. So that raises the question, which efficient Toyota sedan should you pick for around 30 grand? Well, that's what we're about to find out. We've got a ton of things to cover in this comparison, but let's start off by quickly establishing the pricing for these sedans. Starting with the Corolla, for around 30 grand, you're going to get the top trim level, XLE. This version, even after destination, rings in at $29,200. While we always do our best to have similar prices, as you might expect, the Camry does come in more expensive than the Corolla. In its popular mid-level SE trim level, it starts at $30,700, and after a few options, comes in a touch over $34,000. By the way, if you want to get the best price from local dealerships and access to valuable invoice pricing information for these two models or any vehicle, we have a tool on our website to do just that. It's a great tool for shopping and can get you the best deal, so make sure to check the link in the description for more info. If you're new to our comparisons, we do them in an objective way. We've done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories. And towards the end, we will go over the important price difference to evaluate value. But let's go ahead and get started. Starting things out with the exteriors, both have large grills and the all new Camry goes for a quite aggressive design. We're not going to grade subjective matters such as style preferences, but even despite the prices, both of them have premium LED projector lighting. Neither of them have fog lamps, and it's interesting that only the Corolla has LED turn signals. That's a feature that the Camry makes you get a higher trim level to get. Continuing to the sides, both have nice designs, and unsurprisingly, the Camry comes in quite a bit longer than the Corolla. 11 inches to be exact, and let that be a hint for interior space, which we will discuss later. Also different is the wheel sizing. The XLE Corolla still only comes with tiny 16-inch alloy wheels, while the Camry has 18-inch blacked-out alloys this year. We will discuss how those wheel sizes impact ride quality later on in the test drive for those concerned. But moving to the rear, we have partially LED tail lights on both and exposed exhaust outlets on the Camry. Moving along, both mirrors are heated and have blind spot monitoring built in. And both also have Toyota's entire safety suite included as standard equipment. That's a big deal for most buyers. The warranties are of course also the same. And that means you'll nicely be getting 2 years and 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. More importantly, let's see what these two are like on the inside. But first, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. So approaching the sedans, you'll find smart entry systems for both, and a very similar key fob. Both have sensors behind the door handles to unlock, and opening up the doors, you'll find two cabins that look quite different despite being siblings. We'll dive into all those differences individually, but for now, let's talk about the seats themselves. The Corolla has two-tone beige Softex leather seats, with eight ways of power adjustment and heating. The Camry also has Softex faux leather seats, which are heated and have eight ways of adjustment. Neither of them have memory seats, but it's only the Camry that includes lumbar support. But let's get into the major category of overall material quality. While low-end Corollas have pretty basic cabins, this top model has soft touch plastic, leatherette, and piano black accents. Because of that, it pretty much matches the material quality you'll find on this mid-level Camry. It uses soft touch plastics, pinot black, and leatherette to fill in its cabin. So overall, it isn't much of a difference to score a point.
After you start up these hybrids, you'll see gauges that look identical. Both Camry SE and Corolla have 7 inch partially digital setups. But keep in mind, if you do want to spend more money, you can get a digital gauge cluster in the Camry as well as a head up display. Pulling back to the steering wheels, both are leather wrapped and manual adjusting, and only the Camry is including a premium heated wheel. So up until this point, these two have been more similar than you might have expected. But when it comes to interior storage, the Camry takes a big lead over the Corolla with a larger center console that fits a class leading 15 donuts. Speaking of storage bins, they both have wireless phone charging pads. And then moving on to the shifters, you'll find a traditional setup on both. Operation is easy, and when in reverse, you'll find standard backup cameras. The Camry does have the advantage when it comes to resolution and having active trajectory. Moving to climate, the advantages continue since the Camry has a dual zone automatic setup compared to a single zone on the Corolla. The tides turn for audio though. The Corolla has a 9 speaker JBL sound system, while the Camry at this price point continues on with a more basic sounding 6 speaker setup. Alright, now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, in-car technology. The Camry is all new for 2025, and one of the big improvements is the display. It comes in at 12.3 inches this year, which is a substantial 40% larger than the Corolla's 8 inch display. I want to note here that Toyota has confirmed availability of a 10.5 inch display on the Corolla for the 2025 model year, but that won't be released for a few more months, and it's still smaller than the Camry. For functionality, both have standard wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and built-in navigation. Wrapping things up, we have an auto dimming mirror for the Camry only, but surprisingly garage door openers on both. Both are including standard size sunroofs for these trims. Now heading around to the rear, you'll remember I said the Camry is about 11 inches longer than the Corolla. That extra length shows up in the rear spaces, as expected with the Camry having nearly a 10% advantage in legroom and about the same headroom. The advantages will continue for the Camry for features too, with rear vents included in addition to the USB ports and center armrest. The space trend continues as we head around to the trunks. The Camry has about a 15% advantage in overall cargo capacity, making it the more practical choice. Both have 60-40 split folding seats and only the Camry will include a spare tire. All right, we're done with the interiors now, which means it's time to test out the performance and the specs of the hybrid powertrains. When it comes to what's under the hood, they have a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. We'll start with the similarities. Both these models are hybrids, with the Camry offering that exclusively and the Corolla offering a hybrid in addition to a traditional gas-only option. Now for the differences. The new Camry is using Toyota's latest 5th generation hybrid system, utilizing a bigger 2.5 liter 4-cylinder plus electric components to make 225 horsepower. The Corolla, on the other hand, uses a smaller 1.8 liter 4-cylinder that makes about 90 less horsepower at 134. As expected, that translates to a huge difference when accelerating in the Camry's favor. So there we are going well past 60 miles an hour with the Camry SE. Up a steep grade. Up a very steep hill. Definitely want to point that out. Um, we're in Southern California, right on the Mexican border, there's uh, effectively no flat <laughs> terrain at all. Yeah. So we would love to get to do like a nice zero to 60 on a flat area, but that's not gonna happen. Nevertheless, we can tell you, even on a steep incline, 
this Camry SE certainly has more than enough power. Um, so of course, the big news about this next generation Camry is that this is hybrid exclusive. Made it to 60. <laughs> um, you know, fast, this is not fast. Um, you didn't expect it to be fast though. It goes 260. Check it does mark. make it 260 <laughs> miles an hour, indeed, even up an incline. <laughs> um, to be fair, that was definitely an incline we were going up. As we accelerated in both of them, you probably noticed that they have eCVTs. Power is also routed to the ground via the front wheels for both of these testers and all-wheel drive is an available option on both models. Now part of Toyota's hybrid system is an eCVT. It's very nice and responsive. Uh, as soon as you put your foot down, you do get power uh, instantly. And then of course, as Mason said, you do have the availability of all-wheel drive on every single trim level. And also, I think they've done a good job with the eCVT here on the hybrid model, tuning it to maximize what is available with the engine and the horsepower figures, and utilizing that uh, electric torque off the line really well. Now, even though both of these are affordable sedans, you still want good ride quality. The Corolla suspension is tuned very comfort-focused, and its smaller 16-inch wheels make for an excellent ride quality. While Camry is also nice riding, it's not quite as comfortable with its larger wheels. And I do want to talk about your ride quality with this Corolla. Now, one of the very first things that struck me when we sat in this vehicle was surprisingly how comfortable it was. That is typically not a character trait you hear in this segment of vehicle. Um, but I've noticed that this, the uh, suspension does a really good job of soaking up the bumps. And where we're in the XLE trim level, we have the small 16 inch alloy wheels, which does give you really good ride quality, albeit they don't look great. <laughs> I think they give you um, good ride quality. Now, as far as other things that I do wanna point out about this new 2025 Toyota Camry, uh, I wanna talk about your ride quality. So, uh, like I mentioned, we've driven this Camry for quite some time at this point. And one of the things Toyota bragged about is that they improved the seats. And I have to say, these seats are very, very comfortable, even on extensive hour-long road trips. We look forward to testing it out for a full seven days later on, but um, as far as for now, been very impressed with the ride quality and the overall comfort level that you're gonna get, even here on the SE. Here at Car Confections, we know having a quiet cabin is important, which is why we always take a sound level reading of every vehicle we review. We tested both at 55 miles per hour, and the Camry came out on top by about two decibels. We can't award points, however, due to the Camry's reading being unofficial since it was taken in California on a media drive. Here are the readings for your reference, and it's probably safe to assume that the Camry will be the quieter of the two. Fifty-five point four is our official sound level reading. I say official a little lightly because we are here in Southern California. All right, we've settled in at fifty-seven point one decibels. Not a bad sound level reading. Mm -hmm. So the Corolla is comfortable, but what about driving dynamics? Well, not a sports car. The Camry definitely takes the lead here, and it feels nice and buttoned down with quick and responsive steering. That makes it a more pleasurable vehicle to pilot on the daily. You know, I think this is a great time for us to discuss the uh, overall driving dynamic improvements for this all-new Camry because we've been behind the wheel of it several different times in different trim levels, and there's a lot to talk about here. Yeah, Toyota really um, focused a lot on improving the dynamics, and I think they really have uh, been successful in this area. So first of all, as we kind of go through these corners here, it really has a nice and balanced overall feel. Um, you don't feel much body roll at all. It feels quite agile on its feet. Lastly, let's get to fuel economy. Both will surprise you in a good way, coming in at really impressive figures. 
The less powerful Corolla does get better fuel economy by about 6%, coming in at 50 mpg combined, while the Camry is at 47 mpg as equipped. In our reviews and comparisons, we've also been adding in reliability and resale information to give you a better picture of the overall value beyond just the original MSRP. Beginning with reliability, we developed the Combined Reliability Index, which takes into account several studies from trustworthy sources and combines them in a way that gives you a more realistic picture. Twid is one of the highest rated brands, coming in as 16 slots above the industry average. We also put Mason's economics degree to work to develop a detailed predicted resale value tool. After five years and 60,000 miles, Toyota has one of the industry's highest predicted resale values of 64.5%. We also can't forget about the price difference at the original purchase. The Camry costs $5,249 more than the Corolla, which is honestly very substantial given the affordable price point. To account for this about 15% difference, we will give the Corolla 5 points. I want to emphasize that if money, reliability, or resale value matters less to you personally, feel free to disregard these points. And if you'd like to check out our data about reliability and resale values, as well as learn about our methodology, make sure to head over to carconfections.com slash resale and slash reliability. Buying a car is a big decision, and this is a great place to compare all the vehicle makes that you might be cross shopping. All right, so that's it for this sibling rivalry comparison. But let's recap here a little bit and see who should be your personal winner based on what is important to you. So the Camry should be your personal winner. If you're concerned about getting the best technology, obviously that's a newer product. It comes with newer Toyota technology. Also, if you want more space, obviously this is a mid-size sedan, so it is going to give you more space in the rear seats, more trunk space, etc. And obviously, it is also going to be a more powerful option. Now, the Corolla on the flip side should be your choice. Really, uh, the biggest reason, of course, is the affordability. It is quite a bit less expensive than a Camry, even in its middle trim level compared to the highest end version of the Corolla. You're saving a lot of money. Additionally, it's going to actually get better fuel economy and have a little bit more of a comfortable ride as compared to today, the XLE versus the SE trim level. But we want to know which one of these two you're taking down below. Be sure to comment your preference between the two. And if you're looking to buy either of these models or any new vehicle, go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now, the reason you do that is because we have a tool on our website that will connect you with local car dealers in your area to get you the best price. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealership negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description, and we also have a pinned comment at the top of this video. And guys, that's where we're going to leave off. If you enjoyed watching this comparison or found it helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you help us to make more comparisons like this. You show us that it's valuable to you and also help us get the best content. If you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.